Okay guys, so boys and girls, we're on lesson four today. So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to go to the next step, okay? Yes, yesterday, the day before, we looked at the word extreme. Can anyone remember what we meant by the word extreme? Can anyone remember from our previous lesson what the word extreme meant? Um, when we're talking about like citizens and people and important things and citizens um, grown up things. we were talking about grown-up things yeah we were definitely talking about grown-up things haven't we but what did when we talked about the word extreme we talked about a little bit in the previous lesson can anyone remember what we meant by the word extreme an extreme opinion, an extreme opinion yeah when we talked about our opinions an extreme opinion can anyone give an example of an extreme opinion someone might have or that maybe we talked about? They don't listen to you. That maybe they don't listen to you. So someone has an opinion so strong that they may not listen to other people. Yeah. Does anyone else ever heard of the word extreme before? Anyone else ever heard of the word extreme before? Yeah? You've heard of it, but you're not sure what it is. Okay. We talked about it with extreme opinions, didn't we, when we did our debating? We talked about how to debate respectfully and how to debate having such an opinion that you wouldn't listen to others. But the word extreme, have you ever heard of extreme sports? Yeah. So jumping off buildings. and yeah. well, There's an amazing one, isn't it, where they literally, like Spider-Man. Kyle, put your heads up, please where they're jumping around from building to building, or they're jumping off cliffs. That's considered extreme, isn't it? Why do you think they use the word extreme for that? Because um, if you're doing like a challenge, it's normally on ground, but if you're doing extreme, it's like on mountains and high buildings and all those things above. Yeah, so what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? You're making, it more you're making it more dangerous. Yeah, you're taking a risk, aren't you? So it might make things not possible, but extreme, an extreme sport, just we said an extreme opinion, is the furthest point of it, isn't it? So doing an extreme sport like jumping or, I can't remember the name of it now, jumping up from buildings to buildings, that's extreme, you're taking a massive risk. That is a lot more extreme than going surfing or um, some of the activities that you did on your residential trip. Even though there was an element of risk, that's the extreme. Just like an opinion, you can have an extreme opinion, like we talked about, or be extreme about what you think. Okay, great. Can I ask for 10 volunteers, ideally? I'm gonna have 10 volunteers just to make a bit of space. Okay, one, you come and put your chair up. Two, three. Oh, it's all they're trying to get the balls. Four, five, six. Trying to get a mix. Seven, eight, nine, Lily, ten. Can you put your chair this way in row two? So you move around a minute in twos for me. In twos, boys. Come and put your chairs in twos for me. Okay. But what does it kind of look like that I've set up? Like a bus. A bit like a bus, isn't it? Yeah, it is a little bit like a bus. So we're going to do a little bit of role playing now, okay? So please don't be offended. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of role playing now. So I don't want anyone to worry. So I'm at the front. Okay, so I'm the bus driver. I forgot my hat, I'm afraid. So I'm the bus driver. And I'm going to turn around and I'm going to say, right, if you're a girl, I want you off my bus. Off my bus. Go on, off. Off you get. Go on, Lily, off the bus. Don't have girls on my bus, I'm afraid. Don't have girls on my bus, I'm afraid. Yeah, well, I'm in charge of my decision. I don't want girls. Straight away, though, was that fair? No. Why not? Um, because when you say girls off the bus, that's not being a good citizen because you can't say that. Being a good citizen is you should let everyone like do what they do. Don't make fun of them or say mean things to them. Okay, okay. Lily, your response straight away was no. 
Why did you feel like that when I said it? When I said your response was, you were right to say no, because how were you feeling? How were you feeling? How were you feeling? When I said, off the bus, your immediate reaction wasn't, oh, I better get off. You, you meant, no. Because what did you feel wasn't happening? You weren't getting off the bus. Why? Because it wasn't... It wasn't fair. No, it wasn't fair, was it? Okay, good, go on. So I've let the boys sit down and not the girls. So does anyone know the word you use? What I was doing then begins with a D. Disrespect. No disrespect. Discrim. Discrimination. Yeah, it was discrimination, wasn't it? What was I purely discriminating against? Girls. Girls of gender. I was purely discriminating against gender, wasn't I? I was saying, sorry, girls, off my bus, boys, you can say, okay, girls, you can come back on my bus in a minute. Don't get too comfy. <laughs> but in. Kick the boys off now. Oh, I've got, I got a plan, I've got a plan, don't worry. Kick them off, all right, okay. Okay, now I'm on my bus, I'm having a look. Ooh. Okay. If your shoes are not black, if your shoes are not black and there's another colour on them, I want you to get off my bus. <laughs> oh, the response, it's not fair, okay. So most of, so you've got black shoes on, purely black, so you get to stay. They're off. Okay, so, is that fair? No. What have I, what have I kicked you off for then? Because of what you look like and what you're wearing. Yeah, purely on your appearance. What you look like and what you're wearing, I have asked you off the bus. Is that fair, boys and girls? No. No, definitely not fair. Back on, back on. Okay. Okay. Oh, right, okay. Last one. Well, I've got last one. Okay. Curly hair. Who's got? Oh, there's only one person. Okay, all right. No, we'll do that. That's a good one. If you have curly hair, get off my bus. <laughs> now, two of you out of all of you, how? How does that make you two feel? There's only two of you out of all ten. How does that make you two feel? A bit sad. A bit sad. A bit disappointed. Do you think it's fair? Again, what have I tried to check them off for, or Kyle checked them off for? For how they look and appearance. Yeah, purely on appearance and how they look. Should that be right? No. No, boys and girls, thank you ever so much. Do you want to quietly go back to go back to your seat? You can move the table back now. Can anyone remember any stories or any um, people in history? where that situation might have reminded you of. Yeah, go on. Yeah. The American person, Black History, go on. Can't remember her name. What happened to her? Yeah, completely. Rosa Parks, wasn't it? And today, I know that you found out a little bit about her a couple of weeks ago in assembly, but today, we're going to have a little look at Rosa Parks. people to get off the bus and you were saying, Lily, I thought your reaction was brilliant because immediately she knew there was an injustice. It was not fair. So her reaction straight away was, no, I'm not getting off. I know she did because she's very polite and respectful and she knew we were just playing, but her reaction, her gut feeling was, no, I'm getting off the bus. I'm staying on. Okay. Opinion there, we were playing, asking people to get off the bus, the girls off the bus, what you look like. Is that my own? Could, am I allowed to have that opinion? No. Um, am I allowed to have that opinion? No. Why not? Because you, because you're being rude to others. Is it? If it's something about you, or it's not that rude then you can maybe say it, yeah, but what you said was really rude because you offended other people. Okay, but am I still entitled to my own opinion? No. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. 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 You can't stop 
people having an opinion, can you? But what you can do is how those people behave with their opinion makes a difference, doesn't it? Because like you said, I was disrespectful. I wasn't being kind to the other people. Now, Rosa Parks, as you well know, lots of you just said, was Amer from America in the 1950s. So I'm just going to show you a little PowerPoint about Rosa Parks now, okay? So I just want everyone making sure they can see it. So in the 1950s, the communities were segregated. Does anyone know what the word segregated means? Separated, yeah, they were segregated, they were separated. There was what was called the black community and the white community, okay? Now, during this time in Southern America especially, there was no, no opportunity for the two communities to come together, okay? As you can see here, here's a picture. The term they used, we don't use anymore, but the term they used were coloured, as you can see the signs here, and white. What do you notice about these water fountains? One's very loud. Yeah, one is a lot more improved than the other, isn't it? Good. What's that saying in that picture? That is being rude and not respectful and they're just giving down the bad name and therefore white people the new one. They're segregating them, aren't they? They're completely segregating purely on the colour of a person's skin. Now we know that that now is not right. We know that, but in the 50s, this is how they lived for a long time. This is how they spent their day-to-day -day life. It wasn't unusual. This is just the way they lived. Because at the time, before we had all these amazing things like planes and all the job opportunities that we had, people would stay in their own areas, their own communities. Today, we're very lucky. We can travel all over and get jobs in lots of different places, which is why we live in such a rich community of people, aren't we? We're very lucky in Cardiff and very lucky in Kitchener that we get to learn from each other and we have lots of different communities. But back then, if you didn't have lots of money to travel around, you didn't, you stayed where you were, okay? And you can see from some of these pictures that it was very much separated. So they're saying in this community they only want white, white tenants, so in other words, um, people who are white live in there. So what happened? On the buses, and this is true, well this is true, on the buses there was separate seating, okay? There was the areas where the black people could sit and there were the areas at the front where the white people could sit and they could never change, okay? They could never, even if there was loads of seats here, free, if you weren't white, you were not allowed to sit on them. However, if you were white and you wanted to sit by here because there were no seats there, a black person would have to get off the seat. Now, is that fair? No. no, it's really not. We know it's not fair. But like I said, back in those days, that's the way they lived. They didn't know. They didn't see it as any different to what had happened previously, okay? So as you can see, oh, here we go, that if the front rows are full, then the people would have to um, get up their seats and give them to a white person. Now, on December the 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks was travelling home on the buses from a day at her work as a seamstress. What's a seamstress? Anyone know what a seamstress is? No, not retired. Um, she is good at knitting, she makes clothes. Yeah, she makes clothes and sews. That's exactly what a seamstress is. Somebody who makes clothes, who fixes clothes, who makes, who makes things for people to wear. Brilliant. Or maybe things for the house. She was travelling back on the bus from her day at work. She took a seat, just this one here, labelled four coloured people. Okay, so she was in the right section, she was sat on on the seat. After a few stops, the seats began to fill up. Okay, so you can see on the bus here, 
you can see the separation. Can you see it? So the bus got very full. A white man entered the bus. The driver insisted that Rosa and the three other passengers on her row gave up their seats for him. Why did the other three passengers have to give up their seats as well? Why do you think? Yeah, that's exactly it. Because they wanted, he, he needed a seat and they didn't want those other people to be sat with him. Is that fair? No, no we all know it's not fair. But this is, what, this is what took place. Rosa Parks refused. She said, no, I am not moving. Because how was she feeling like you just said now? Really upset and angry. Yeah. Tired. Tired, upset, angry. How else do you think she was feeling? A little bit offended. Offended, definitely. Annoyed because she had such a hard day. Annoyed because she had such a hard day. That it's unfair. Yeah, completely. Fed up. She, she's fed up of it all, isn't she? She refused. Did she refuse in an argumentative, violent way? No, she just said, I'm not moving. A bit like Lily did when I said originally, your reaction, rightfully so, was no. The injustice of it. Okay. Rosa Park was arrested off the bus. This is her, this is a picture of her being arrested. And she was tried on charges of disorderly conduct. Disorderly conduct just means that she didn't behave in the appropriate way, okay? She didn't behave in the correct way. Had she done anything wrong? No. In our eyes? No. no. She hadn't. She hadn't behaved violently. She wasn't rude. She wasn't disrespectful. She just refused to move. However, back in the 1950s, Rosa's refusal was what compared to what day-to-day -day life was like? What was it? It was, rude. it was considered, yeah, it was considered rude by, by those people, but what, what was it? It was, extreme. it was extreme. Yeah, it was considered an extreme reaction because what was she not doing? Was she not doing? Doing the right things to the other people. Were they the right things? Right things they think. Good boy. The right things that they think, don't they? Her response, her view, she felt was extreme. They felt work was extreme. She was considered to be extremist. Because what was she doing? What was she doing? She just she was just sitting on the bus and then the man came and told her to get off the seat, but she didn't. But her actions were what? What were they, what were they doing? Crime. They considered it a crime, but was it? No. She was standing up for herself, wasn't she? She was saying, how are we all living in this community so separately? This is not right. This is what she said. She said, this is silly. We are all people together. Why are we living so separately? That's what she was saying by not standing up. And that was considered extreme because it went against what the government and what the people who were running the communities felt it should be, okay? Rosa Park believed in a world where black and white communities, communities could live and work together. All right. Later on, oh, she 
was named the mother of the civil rights movement for her refusal on that day. So today, when we think of Rosa Parks, do we think of her in a positive or negative way? Positive. Positive way. Why? Why? She didn't do anything wrong, but what did she do? Why do we think of her in a positive, as a positive role model today? Not how they thought of her 50 or 60 years ago, nearly 70 years ago, isn't she? She defended people, yes. Yeah, she stuck up for people, didn't she? Like if she ever done this, then um, some of us would Yeah, so maybe if Rosa Parks hadn't done this, we might not all be here today, yeah? That's a really good point. She gave us rights. She gave us rights. She gave us rights. She was awfully courageous and brave. She was very courageous and brave. That goes back to our first lesson, wasn't it? About being a good citizen. But sometimes you need that courage to stand up for your opinions. Now earlier, when we talked about extreme opinions, and I said, is it okay to have it? One or two of you went, no. Of course it is. It's how you deal with them that's important, isn't it? Did Rosa Park, with her opinion, was her behaviour negative or positive? It was positive, wasn't it? Of course it was. The way she dealt with that situation was positive. She was making a stand because what she was standing up for was the belief that everyone should live together. And now, seven, nearly 70 years on, we are very lucky that society and communities have moved on. And we're a lot more, everyone is treated more equally. And the way that people are living together. Can anyone think of somebody in history, or somebody who we've, you may have been researching, who had extreme views, but behaved the opposite way to Rosa Parks? Who behaved the opposite way to Rosa Parks? Hitler. Hitler, yeah, I know you're studying World War II. Completely. Hitler. How did he, what was his behaviour? Because they both had extreme opinions, didn't they? Acor according to the people who they were living with. Rosa Parks was considered an extremist back in the 1950s because what she believed was so against what the, the people in power believed. Hitler had extreme opinions. Yeah? But what did he do differently? He tried to invade lots of countries. He tried to take over lots of countries. He made, he, uh, made the poor Jews suffer a lot and um, put them to a concentration camp. Yeah, he made uh, the Jewish community suffer and put them in concentration camps. He killed some Jews. He killed lots of, yeah, he killed lots of people. He wanted to harm people. That's the difference, isn't it? That's the difference. You can have a view. Whether the person next to you thinks you're right or wrong is, is not the point. How you deal with that view and how you present that view makes a massive difference. And that's what we're going to look at this morning. Okay, so there's Rosa Parks there. And there are lots of people in history that were considered to have extreme views. Martin Luther King, the suffragettes. Anyone heard of the suffragettes? Anyone know who the suffragettes are? Yeah? No? Yeah, go on, who were the suffragettes? The people who stood up for women's rights. Yeah, the ladies who stood up for women's rights at the beginning of the 1900s. They were considered extremists. How dare these women say they want equal rights to men? How dare they say they want to go and get jobs? Just like in World War II, what happened to lots of the women in World War II? What changed for women a lot in World War II? They started working in factories. Why? Because where were all the men? They were at war, weren't they? And the women started working in factories. And then after a while, after they, lots of men were dead, um, they made women fight in the war. Yeah, they had the ladies fight in the war completely. 
They made medicines. The women played a really vital part in the war, didn't they? Up until then, only some women were starting to work, and that was all because of the suffragettes movement. But at that time, they were considered extreme in what their opinion were, but they'd go on marches, and they would do things l legally. So as you say, there's Rosa Parks. So her message, my message to the world, is that we must come together and live as one. And there she is there. Okay, so what I want us to look at now, we just talked about a couple of different people, and we said well, the biggest difference between having an extreme view, between positive and negative, is what? What's the biggest difference between positive and negative extremism? Positive is when you're helping people and doing what's right. Negative is when you're invading people and being rude to them. Okay, so what are we looking at? Being mean and being unkind. Um, yeah, so what are they? So if you're positive, you're like kind of changing the world in a good way. But if negative, someday maybe Germany might invade the whole world. So you're changing the world, it? yeah. Okay, yeah. Right and wrong. And the difference between that are your behaviour. It's how you behave, isn't it? How you behave changes your extreme views, whatever they are, from being positive to being negative. So what I'm going to give each group now is a Venn diagram. Does everyone know how a Venn diagram yeah. works? Yeah. So we've got two sides. We've got the middle bit where it's both and then we've got the bit outside that is neither, that's none of them. Okay, so each group are going to be given a Venn diagram and I'm going to give you an envelope. Sorry guys, there's no money in there. It's not money. In your envelope, sorry miss, are lots of um, behaviours. Okay, lots of behaviours. What I want you to do in your group on your Venn diagram is one a group, brilliant, is you are going to sort the behaviours into positive behaviours, negative behaviours, and both. So your one side will be positive <coughs> extremism. Negative extremism. Yeah, you're working together. Pardon? Yes, push can sweet heart. One group. One group. So, you should have one group. If you've got a couple of extras, great. Yeah, if you've got a couple of extras, you're more than welcome to split up into twos and threes. You can use these now. So, Oh, fantastic. Thank you very much, lovely. Okay, so what you should have is your Venn diagram. You're going to have to write on your Venn diagram positive extremism, negative. Your middle bit will be if it's both. And then the outside is if you don't think it's any. I'm just going to quickly, very quickly, go through what they are so that you understand what the wording is, just in case, okay? So don't worry about opening yours yet. Just have a little look so you know. So we've got acting violently, non-threatening behaviour. What's non-threatening behaviour? It's not threatening behaviour. It's not threatening behaviour. What does threatening mean? It's not being rude or um, being nasty or hurting people. It's not being rude or nasty or hurting people. Okay. Peaceful behaviour. Having strong beliefs, so like we said, having an opinion, having strong beliefs. Having an open mind. What do we mean by having an open mind? Like Hitler, basically, he just thought, why not invade the whole world? Like, mm, that's not quite what having an open mind means. Listen to everyone's ideas. Yeah, when we did our lesson three, we talked about debating. We had to have open minds about listening to other people's ideas. Good. We've got lying, we all know what that means. Acting dangerously, we all okay with that one? Yeah. yeah. Being narrow.
narrow-minded. To have open-minded is listening to other people, Kyle. What does narrow-minded mean? If open-minded means listening to other people, listening to their views, what do you think narrow-minded means? Not listening to other people, yeah. Believing that your view is the best and not listening to anybody else. We've got behaving within the law, so it being legal, showing respect. What does being irrational mean? Being irrational. Um, I think it's um, listening to other people or being good or helping others or it's either being nasty and in Killing people? No, it's, it's not any of those. Being harsh. Being harsh, okay, being harsh. Being irrational, yeah? Not being positive. Not being positive, yeah, okay, not being positive, good. Being irrational. Imagine now, I came in here, okay, and I was teaching you, and I walked in and I noticed that there were two people talking really, really quietly, talking really, really quietly. And I turned around and said, right, those two people, that's it. You are never allowed in my classroom again. Out, I'm voting in Mrs. Jackson. You're being banned from the school. That's it. You're overreacting. Overreacting. I'm reacting in an irrational way, OK? I'm reacting in a very irrational way. Because I'm being extreme a little bit, isn't it, in the, my response to you. The two people just having a quiet chat as I walk in the room. And I sent you out, never allowed to be in my classroom again, never allowed to be in the school. I'm being irrational, all right? So it's thinking to the extreme, thinking in an irrational way. Showing bias. What does bias mean? Showing bias. Seth? Only showing one side, yeah, brilliant. Showing bias, only, only agreeing with one side, brilliant. Being an effective communicator, so we talked a little bit about that. Um, it's when you're being effective is when you're like kind of being mean to people and hurting them. Oh no, what does effective mean, you have six? Being an effective communicator. Yeah, something that changes something, kind of. It's like um, affecting your, when you're like talking, like a debate. Yeah, it's affecting you doing it in a good way. Yeah. When it affects you. When it affects you, yeah. An effective communicator means what they're saying, you're, you're communicating what you need people to hear in a really, in a good way, that they're listening to you, that you're effective in the way that they do it, because they they're listening to you. Showing tolerance. Anyone know what the word tolerance means? Heard of it? Showing tolerance. Not showing no, it's not showing. Sh no, not quite. Patience. Yeah, showing tolerance, being patient with each other, showing you understand the other side's point of view. You may not agree with it, but you're tolerant with it. Okay, showing tolerance, being misleading. Anyone know what being misleading means? Misleading someone. Go on, Caden. Pardon? Yeah, not leading them properly. Giving them an idea of what's going to happen, but actually that's not what's really going to happen. You're misleading them. So, for instance, um, let's think of an example where you might be misleading. So, say, for instance, I said... Right, come to school to on Saturday morning because we're going to do some homework, OK? But it's all right. We're not going to do anything really hard. Um, I'm going to get make sure you've got loads of like um, chocolates and sweets and things like that and to get you into school. And then when you come to school on the Saturday morning, there's none of that. And we're sitting down and we're working, working, working. What have I done? Yeah, it's kind of like a lot. I've misled you. I told you we're going to do a bit of homework, but I've said that we're going to have sweets and chocolates and things to entice you in. I'm misleading you, aren't I? I'm telling you one thing, but that's not necessarily what's actually happening, so I'm misleading. And then the other one was behaving outside of the law. So we've gone through them all now.
I'm going to give you a few minutes or so on your groups, you five, ten minutes, to place these where you think they should go, okay? So off you go. So later, where is your Off you go. So open them out, where would you put them? So I'm tired of your look. You can either write them or just place them on, I would. One, two, ten, let's have a look. So have a look at what you've got, where do you think they would go, okay? Have a little look. We're going to have a look at them, where on your Venn diagram you think they should go. It's been really interesting to come around the tables and listen to your reasoning and where you're going to put things. So we're just going to have a look at a couple of them now and we're going to see where the majority of you put them, okay? So what we're going to do, I'm going to say which one, if it is positive, if you put that one in the positive section, that's going to be number one, okay? So when I ask you, if you put it in the positive section, you'll hold up one finger. If you put it in the negative, what do you reckon? Two. two. Oh, you've caught on already. If it's in both, what do you think? Three. Oh, look at that, geniuses. What about the four? Four. On the outside, well done. Okay. So let's have a look. Okay, so do me a favour. Check your hands working. Check your fingers are working. Give them a shake. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Make sure you think it's right. Have a little look. Let's go with a couple of the easy ones now. Okay, where would you put show and respect? Where have you all put show and respect? Yeah, positive. Of course it is. That's a positive behaviour, isn't it? Show and respect to somebody is a positive behaviour. Brilliant, hands down. Okay, what about... Where have you put acting dangerously? Acting dangerously. <laughs> Don't worry. Two, yeah. Now, why have you put? In, why have you put it in two? I mean, why did you guys put that one in two? Why did you say it was negative, acting violently, or dangerously? Sorry, acting dangerously. Why did you your table put it in two? So you give an explanation, but it should be, is that a good behaviour to have? If you've got an extreme view, which we all said people do, a strong belief, but a negative behaviour, we've put as acting dangerously, haven't you? And like you said, it's so that the way they're acting towards other people, they're, they're harming people. Brilliant. Okay, good. Nice and simple. Peaceful behaviour. Peaceful behaviour. Where have you all put peaceful behaviour? Number one, brilliant, hands down. Okay, where have you put? Where have you put being an effective communicator? Being an effective communicator. Brilliant. Okay. So you guys have put being an effective communicator in positive. Can you tell us why? Can you tell us why you put being an effective communicator in just in the positive behaviour? Why did you choose that box? Remember, there's no right or wrong, it's what you believe. Why did you put it in there, an effective communicator? Chantelle, do you know why? What you guys discussed? Can you remember? Okay, let's... It's quite hard to explain. Okay, give me an idea. Boys, careful. Well, we don't really think it's bad or bad or good, so we could so you don't think it's bad or good, so you put it in the positive. Where could have, where did some of the other groups put it? Yeah, lots of the groups put it in the middle, didn't they? Why? Who would like to tell me why they believe being an effective communicator can be a positive behaviour and a negative behaviour? Why? So you could be affecting something in a bad way by communicating 
what you're saying or in a good way. Okay, good. Anyone else? Yeah. If you were in a debate and you said, you're not allowed to wear black shoes in school and then your friend believes it, that's like kind of bad. Like, why aren't you allowed? And then if someone says, like, you can't <coughs> wear um, school jumpers in school, that's also bad. So, like, it's kind of middle because you could say good things and other people believe it. Brilliant, exactly. I think you, you've summed it up brilliant there. Yeah, you, what you could be saying, if you even though you're communicating it in a really good way, people are going to believe you, but if your message is not a good message, then you're going to convince people to, to follow that, that message, aren't you, rather than a good message. Okay, good. Where have people put lying? Lying. Now, this is an interesting one. Lying. So we've got a couple in two. So why did you guys put lying in two? Yeah, go on. Um, if you're doing, like, if it's someone's birthday and you're going to do a surprise and say what you're going to do, or like my birthday, you can lie about it to maybe a good surprise. So did you put it in two or did you put it in three? If you put it in both? Both. You put it in three. Okay. So it cut lying, you might be given a... A good lie. So if it was someone's birthday and you're doing a surprise party or something. Okay, all right, I can see that. Did any other groups put it in the middle, both? Quite a lot of you put it in both. Okay, that's interesting, isn't it? So, Lily, what did your groups discuss when you come to lying? Because you put it in both, didn't you? What was your reason for that? for a bad course. Okay, yeah, great, well done. Okay, so let's have a look at just one more. Let's have a look at... We've done being an effective communicator, haven't we? Yeah. Right, what about... Where have you put having strong beliefs? Okay, okay, okay. Over here, you put it in one. You put having strong beliefs just in positive behaviour. Yeah? Can you tell us why? Why did you put it just in positive? Any of you on the table? So it's not wrong to have your beliefs and opinions, no. You're completely right. So is that just a positive behaviour? Is it? It's both, isn't it? How many other groups put it in both? Quite, yeah, most of the other groups did. Okay, hands down. So we're saying, aren't we, that having a strong belief is no problem with that. But what are we saying has an impact, Kai? What are we saying has an impact on that strong belief? What changes that strong belief from pos being a positive thing, like what Rosa Parks did, to a negative thing? What, what makes that change? How you deal with it. Yeah, what have we been looking at? What did I call these? Um, different actions. Different actions, yeah. Is opinions, yeah, it's it's how you behave. It comes down to, doesn't it, Year Six, how you behave. Just like we looked at at the very beginning lesson, lesson one, where we talked about being a good citizen and all the attributes you need to be a good person. We are not saying having a strong belief about something 
is a bad thing. But what are we saying? That um, when you have a strong belief, um, it, it's, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Because sometimes, if you have a strong belief, um, it, might, it might be rude or bad, but it's your opinion. So what changes it? What changes it from, what changes your strong belief to it being a negative belief or a bad belief? What changes it? It can be a good thing. It can be a good thing or a bad thing, but what changes it? Behavior. Your behaviour. Completely your behaviour. Every single one of us has beliefs about lots of different things. We may not all agree with them. But how you behave about that belief, if you're behaving, Kyle, in a negative way, if you're acting dangerously, if you're misleading people, if you're being unlawful, you're going against the law, then that is not right because what is it doing to other people? Harming them. It's harming them. But you can have a strong belief and be positive by being open-minded to others. So say, well, this is what I believe. I respect what you believe. You're being open-minded. You're willing to listen to others. You're acting within the law, aren't you? Yeah. You're yeah. acting within the law. You're not causing any damage or hurting people or hurting things. So ultimately, nothing wrong with having a strong belief. But how you deal with that belief is what makes the difference, isn't it? How you behave is what makes the difference. Because ultimately, what do we all want to be? Kai, what do we all want to be ultimately? Yeah, good people. That's what it comes back to, is being a good person. Okay, well done, class two. I think you've been brilliant this morning. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah. What have you learned from this? What have you, you've made you think a little bit more about that maybe you hadn't thought much about before? About like your extreme opinions, how to be a good citizen or not. But do you think you understand the word extreme and what extremism means a little bit more? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So looking at Rosa Parks and looking at what happened there has really made you think about how lucky we are today, aren't we, to live in a society where people are more respectful, or majority of people are more respectful to each other. Taught you how to have good behaviour and how actually, yeah, this is what's important, isn't it? Good. Well done, everybody. You've been absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much.